Thank you, Peter. And thank you all for joining Botanics Pharmaceuticals in this investor presentation. Botanics Pharmaceuticals is a clinically staged dermatology company focused in the key areas of dermatology and antimicrobial indications. We do this through using our proprietary topical delivery technology called Permatrex combined with a synthetic form of cannabidiol or CBD. Our pipeline is focused in large multi-billion dollar categories where large generations of prescriptions and dollars in the United States in big key markets such as acne, rosacea, atopic dermatitis, and bacterial infections are found. We're quite pleased with the world-class experience team that we've assembled primarily in the United States, but also in Australia. Today's presentation is gonna focus on our upcoming cat lists that are those milestones that are going to occur over the next 12 to 18 months. By way of introduction, my name is Vincent Polito. I'm the president and executive chairman here at Botanics Pharmaceuticals. I've been in the pharmaceutical industry for almost 35 years. Most recently, I've been involved in two of the largest dermatology transactions that have occurred, that is the sale of Medicis Pharmaceuticals to Valiant for $2.4 billion and the sale of Anacor Pharmaceuticals to Pfizer for $5.2 billion. Really, those sales demonstrating the attractiveness of this market sector. So let's take a look at our advanced and late staged pipeline here. The pipeline is really broken into two categories, that is antimicrobial research and dermatology research. At the top, you see BTX 1801, our antimicrobial study. Most recently, we announced positive phase two results of that study, which is leading us to a further study to occur in the first quarter of 2022. I'll get into the details of that study a little bit later. BTX 1702 is our dermatology rosacea study that is well underway with a target completion of mid-2022. I'll get into the details of that study shortly. BTX 1503 is our acne study. This is our phase three ready asset that will really be informed by its final design once BTX 1702, that is the rosacea study, is completed. All of these clinical studies utilize our proprietary technology that is Permatrex as its topical delivery system. So you might be asking yourself, well, why synthetic cannabinoids to treat these diseases? Well, it turns out that synthetic cannabinoids or CBD is very well suited for common skin diseases and infections. Matter of fact, over the last several decades, it's been proven and most certainly the research that Botanics has conducted over the last couple of years shows synthetic CBD to be safe and well tolerated, even at the very high doses that we're currently studying, such as in our BTX 1801 antimicrobial study and our current rosacea study. It, it's proven to show broad anti-inflammatory properties, which is common in most dermatologic skin conditions and antimicrobial properties, such as the killing of Staph aureus or MRSA. These utilizations of both anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial aspects have a widespread use across human and animal health. So why don't we dig into the details of our clinical platform right now, and I'll start off with our dermatology platform, and that is BTX 1702, our rosacea study. Now, most people are familiar or know someone with rosacea. It's commonly characterized as a person who blushes easier. And whether those triggers are environmental triggers, they're an immune response, or sometimes even the drinking of alcohol can cause the trigger of rosacea. This is a very frustrating disease for the patients who suffer from it. Now, there are many different forms of the disease. The, the particular form that we're studying here at Botanics is called papular pustular rosacea, which is characterized by acne-like breakouts. There are over 16 million Americans in the US that suffer from rosacea, and 85% of those patients are over the age of 30. So you can imagine as a, an adult suffering with this disease, there are many comorbidities associated with it, such as depression, social anxiety, embarrassment, or just overall decreased quality of life 
to try to control these rosacea triggers. So these are highly motivated patients that are looking for new treatments that are safe and effective to control their papular posterior rosacea. Our current phase one slash phase two study is three dose groups of 120 patients. We have a high dose group, a low dose group, and a vehicle arm, that is the placebo arm making up the 120 patients. It's over 15 sites across Australia and New Zealand, and we're studying this in adults with moderate to mild papular pustular rosacea. The study will be conducted for eight weeks, and as I mentioned earlier, targeted to complete in mid-2022. Now, this is primarily a safety and tolerability study. However, we will look at those clinical efficacy endpoints that we will be held accountable for from the FDA in what would be a phase three study. So we can look at the efficacy, not only the safety and tolerability, but the efficacy outcomes in controlling papular pustular rosacea. Let's transition into our antimicrobial platform with BTX 1801. As I mentioned earlier here, we had demonstrated results in our phase 2A study, which we announced earlier this year. That was in the reduction of post-nasal, post-surgical infections um, from nasal decolonization of these patients. And in that nasal decolonization study, we showed eradication rates as high as 76% at day seven. And that eradication rate extended throughout day 28, even though treatment stopped at day five, showing really strong results. So with these efficacy results in hand, we've decided to initiate a new BTX 1801 study. And again, it is uh, for nasal decolonization for post-surgical post -surgical infections, but in a group of individuals that are very high risk, that is hemodialysis patients. Now hemodialysis patients uh, undergo treatment several times a week. And these patients are at risk of bloodstream infections. And these, these bloodstream infections can be very serious or life-threatening to these patients, often uh, uh, involving hospitalization of these patients, um, or there are uh, other comorbidities and mortalities associated with those blood seed infections. Today, there are no approved treatments for nasal decolonization in this patient population, thus demonstrating a real need uh, for this study. So we're excited to kick this off, in, as I mentioned, in the first quarter of 2022. So in summary here, I've gone over the key, key clinical milestones that you could expect over the next 12 to 18 months. Most certainly just covered BTX 1801 in the kickoff of that phase two study in the first quarter of 2022. The rosacea study, BTX 1702, as I mentioned, is well underway, recruiting throughout Australia and New Zealand right now, targeted complete in mid-2022. And as I mentioned, that study will inform the final design and outcome of our phase three ready ACME study, that is BTX 1503. Now, I didn't go over our, our canine dermatitis study, which is BTX 1204A because of time restraints here, but we initiated a canine proof of concept study in atopic dermatitis. That particular study is also targeted to read out in the first half of 2022. So multiple shots on goal here in the next 12 to 18 months for Botanics Pharmaceuticals. Again, all utilizing our proprietary technology and topical delivery system we call Permatrex. I would encourage you all to learn more about uh, Botanics by visiting our website at botanics.com and consider investing in Botanics as part of your overall investment strategy. Thank you. Well, thanks very much, um, Vince. Uh, I guess a lot of, uh, yeah, thanks, Vince. Um, I think a lot of people watching this would, you know, would like to get a handle on what do you think is the the critical, critically important product that's really going to be the the the, the, the company lifting um, product. Yes. Uh, thank you, Peter. I really appreciate the opportunity to be a part of the the conference here today. So. As you looked at the pipeline stop slide that we had, you see a lot of activity. And in some regards, it's uncommon to see 
Mm -hmm. uh, a clinically stage pharmaceutical company with so many, let's call them shots on goals here, because we've got phase three ready assets, such as our acne program. We've got a phase one B2 study in rosacea that's currently underway right now and enrolling really well. We've started a phase two study in our antimicrobial program uh, that's about to kick off in the first quarter of this year. So um, I would say if, if we took the, the typical pharmaceutical approach to this thing, the phase three ready asset is in acne is the most advanced. Um, and so the company is waiting for the rosacea study to complete before we initiate the final design of that phase three study, mainly because we're testing a new higher dose uh, strength and formulation in our rosacea study, and it'll inform what that final outcome would be. So if I had to rank them for you, um, we got a phase three ready asset, which not many pharmaceutical companies have in their pipeline. Uh, the rosacea study, uh, that phase one, phase two, could quickly move uh, to a phase two, potentially phase three study. Uh, and the phase two study that's kicking off in the first quarter uh, will move to uh, with positive data in hand phase three as well. So uh, we, we've got a lot of shots on goal here uh, in the next 12 to 18 months on what we would advance first is really the, the shorter answer to your question. Mm. Um, I have to ask this question because people who watch this always go to the chart and they have a look at your, your, your previous share price history. And I know uh, as a CEO, it's, it's never easy to explain what the idiots in the markets do. <laughs> uh, but, the, but the bottom line, you know, you're, you're around 22, now you're at five and a half cents. What has been the, the story that's um, underpinned the, the, the share price movement over the last few years? Yeah, yeah. So I, again, efficacy uh, wins all conversations here. So positive data in hand from these upcoming trials that we see over the next 12 to 18 months, I think uh, is, is really is what's gonna propel the company forward with, with so many opportunities for positive data. You know, for us, you're asking a really good question because we announced results of our 1801 study earlier this year that was the uh, post nasal surgical uh, nasal decolonization study. And the results of that study were very, very strong in, in terms of the killing rate. So uh, we saw the stock kind of run up uh, and then we, we announced the results um, and then the stock kind of drifted down to where it is here today. So we were surprised actually by that because for us, we've really validated the fact and it's been proven in the literature, but through our new dose and formulation, we can kill staph infections and the studies showed that. So we're ticking that box because most common dermatologic skin diseases contain a bacterial component and an inflammatory component. So, uh, you know, I, I think we're kind of sitting here in a really strong position for these upcoming studies. Well, Rickard, do you, you have a question for Vince? Yeah, Vince, um, thanks for that. Um, look, I guess come back to cash flow. Um, I was looking at the statement. Um, you seem like you've got a reasonable amount of cash on hand, about 20 million, I think. Um, but uh, the burn rate's a bit over a million dollars a quarter. So. But if you increase these trials, um, what's the sort of projection in terms of uh, how long cash can continue for? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a really great question here. So um, it, 20 million bucks on hand, the R&D tax rebate uh, in clinical trials paying us 43% back on everything that we spend uh, has been a, a, a strong advantage of the company given our clinical position. You know, just the general type of overhead of the company. We don't burn a lot of cash operationally. It's two, two and a half million dollars a year. So the variable that you're really seeing there in the burn is those clinical trials. And, um, you know, the short answer to your question is it, it really depends. So if we moved into another phase two study here, a larger phase two study, uh, in any of these, you know, you're probably talking four to five million dollars. If we go to the bigger phase three studies uh, for registration and approval, you know, we're, we're going to be in a position where we're going to go and raise some cash for those because we're sitting on positive phase two data. We're moving to phase three. Uh, so those would be instances that we would we would do that. But the normal break burn rate that we've got with the company, the 20 million bucks, for all that we're studying right now, and then you saw on that on that uh, pipeline chart, it's adequate cash for the company. Okay, and, and just talk about the sort of exit plan for uh, 
let's say that you know your phase two trials are successful. I mean, do you obviously you don't go on to make these um, pharmaceuticals? It's, it's big pharma is going to manufacture distribute. Is, is that the plan? How do, just try to how do you how do you as a what, what's the strategy exit plan for the, the research and the work you're doing with these trials? Yeah. So one of the strengths of the company uh, is really that people in this company have taken molecules off the bench all the way through commercialization. Uh, myself, I've launched over 20 drugs in the dermatology space. So we have the capabilities to commercially launch these things if we wanted to, uh, which I did at Medicis Pharmaceuticals. Uh, however, that company got taken out for $2.4 billion in value. Um, at Anacor, we were ready to launch that drug uh, for atopic dermatitis, but got taken out for Pfizer by 5.2. So Really, the short answer is, is that we're going to develop these drugs all along the way. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of interest in what we're doing. And positive data in hand, I think, will we'll generate a lot of interest from partnerships or, or strategic alliances um, or, or potentially uh, buyouts from, of the company. Uh, but we could commercialize if we have to. Okay, Vince, thanks very much. Good luck in the future. It'd be interesting yes. to see how the share price performs in, in uh, the, the months and years ahead. Great stuff.